We're going to be talking about the characteristics of cells in this mini lesson today. Cells being the smallest particle that is considered living. All right, the first thing that we have to talk about is cell theory. The fact that it's a theory makes it sound like it's going to be something that's really difficult, but actually it's kind of common sense. Now, one time it wasn't common sense, back when, you know, microscopes were first being invented and people looked through these things and were like, hey, look at these tiny little things that are moving around. That's crazy. But keep in mind, that was a long time ago. They're pretty simple things. The first part of cell theory, cells are the most basic living thing. In other words, they're the smallest thing that's still considered living by scientists. Two, all living things are made of cells. So if it's a living thing, it's made of cells. And three, all cells come from other cells. They don't just magically appear. All cells are categorized into one of two groups. They're either prokaryotic cells or eukaryotic cells. Pro means first. So prokaryotic cells are the first cells, or what we think of as the most primitive. They're very basic. Things like bacteria, the yucky stuff that makes you sick. Eukaryotic cells, you means true. These are your true cells. In other words, these are the cells that you find in humans or in plants and animals. And since we are kind of egocentrical, we think everything should revolve around us, we say that the types of cells that we have are the true cells. These are far more complicated. You can see there's lots of different organelles inside the eukaryotic cell that we don't have in the prokaryotic cell. The eukaryotic cells can be further broken down into more categories. The most common are plants and animals. So although there are many different types of cells, all cells at least have the same basic parts, and we call them organelles, which mean little organs. So just like you have organs in your body, your heart and your liver, all of your cells have little organs too. The ones that you need to know about today are the outer layer, which we call the membrane, which is represented by this yellow thick line right here. Things you need to know about the membrane is it's responsible for regulating what can enter and leave the cell, and it's made up of lipids or fats, one of the biomolecules that we, you either will be learning about or um, have just learned about, depending on where you are in your class. Next, we have ribosomes, which are these purple dots on the drawing. Your ribosomes are structures that are responsible for making proteins, also very important, and another biomolecule. Then we have the nucleic acid, which is represented by that red squiggly line. Nucleic acid can be in the form of DNA or RNA. It's the instructions that your cell needs in order to make everything in order to survive. It's kind of the equivalent of the brain for the cell. And then last, we have the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm fills in all of the empty space in the cell. So it's kind of like a jello or a jelly-like substance made mostly of water. So when you say your body is made up of mostly water, it's because every single cell in your body contains the cytoplasm, which is essentially water. Now to the good stuff. You guys have an assignment tonight. I want you to find the function of the following organelles or other cell parts. Now these are all cell parts or organelles that are found in most cells but not all cells. Um, to complete this assignment you're going to need a separate sheet of paper and make sure that you put your name on it and bring it to class. Your teacher is going to want to make sure that you have this done. So you're going to look up the function of the nucleus, the cell wall, mitochondria, chloroplast, and flagellum. Have fun!